Max in Mad Max Fury Road is not a hero. But he is the main character. And Akira in Akira, the animated film, is not a main character. But he is a protagonist. And Samwise Gamgee in The Lord of the Rings is not the protagonist, but he is a hero. These three terms, the hero, the protagonist, and the main character can be a bit nebulous and even semantic at times. The literary debate over if these terms are the same or different can sometimes feel like an argument you might find buried on a Reddit forum. But I do think they can still be useful and even helpful at times as we analyze stories and work on storycraft in general. Welcome back to the Wrestling With Words podcast. My name is Cameron. I'm a writer and editor and your host. Here, we talk about all things related to writing and storytelling. And the goal is to help you tell better stories while also understanding how the best stories are told. Most of the times, a character who is the lead in a story will check all of these boxes or at least two of them. For instance, in the Lord of the Rings, Frodo fulfills all of these roles. He's the hero, the protagonist, and the main character for most of the series. Although at certain times in the story, other characters come and go as heroes and protagonists. Gandalf and Aragorn are specific ones that come to mind. Gandalf playing a massive role as a protagonist in the Fellowship of the Ring, with Aragorn as one of the main protagonists and possibly even a secondary main character in The Return of the King. Looking briefly though at Gandalf, while he is Gandalf the Grey, he is the one who initially takes action and motivates the plot to get started in tandem with Frodo. He is the one who spends years searching for the ring and is the one who tells Frodo when the ring is discovered to be in Bilbo's possession to take it to Rivendale. In Berserk, Guts is the protagonist and the main character, but might not be much of a hero or considered a hero in some episodes. And then there's also Kelsier in Mistborn, the final empire, where he is both the hero and also the protagonist, though he is not exactly the main character. And depending on the medium in which you are telling a story, the use of these terms and the combination of them might be a little bit different. In movies, most often the protagonist, the hero, and the main character will all be the same character or that character will embody two of those three. In TV, this is still common to see a character inhabit all three of these as their main role, but it becomes lesser so. And then when it comes to books, this separation is actually a lot more common than most of us initially realize. And this goes even a step further with video games, where in video games, most often the player is seen as the hero or the main character while the protagonist is a, another character entirely. But for most mediums, the separation of these roles a character can inhabit and how many they might inhabit will often occupy more of the fringes of examples rather than being the norm. Most often a character will fulfill two of these roles as opposed to all three and also more often than just fulfilling one. And we are, of course, talking about primary characters and most often primary viewpoint characters. In the examples that I'm going to kind of talk about today and the reason that kind of sparked this, they're going to mostly center around those edge cases. And I can already hear it now. I already know that there are going to be people that want to either shout at me or will shout at me for making a distinction between a main character and a protagonist. I see it a lot that people say that these are two of the same things, but I often argue differently. In some cases, yes, that is definitely the case, while in others, there is a bit more nuance. And I think those nuances are worth taking a further look at. First though, before we talk about the difference between the protagonist and the main character, let's talk about the hero or at least what a hero is in relation to this literary umbrella 
the question in terms of labeling a character as the hero of the story is one that doesn't necessarily ask the moral implication of what is a hero, but more of a question of what role does the hero normally play in a story. Most often, the audience will be rooting for this character, and will even see this character as virtuous, or as the one that might save the day. It's very common to see the hero as a paragon who is facing off against something that is evil or seen as bad. A character that is the hero of the story is usually one that is labeled without much nuances. They're usually coming in to save other characters or thwart some sort of antagonist. Some examples here where a character is the hero while not necessarily being either a protagonist or a main character. Probably the best example of this is Lord of the Rings Samwise Gamgee. I can't carry it for you. But I can carry you. Come on. He is neither a protagonist nor the main character, but he is seen as a hero and often seen as the most heroic character in the series. Another character that is very much a side character, but embodies a lot of the typical heroic archetypes. And that is Teddy in Westworld. He checks all the boxes of a typical Western heroic protagonist, but plays no protagonist role, nor is he any sort of main character in the overall story. With a, another great example of a character who is neither a protagonist nor the main character being Siri in The Witcher, but specifically in The Witcher 3, The Wild Hunt. She is, by all intents and purposes, the most important character and the character that the player is helping prepare to really succeed and save the day. Now, this is a very large game, so at some points she might seem like the protagonist, where Finding Siri is sort of the main plot, but for the most part, she takes the position as the main hero of the story. But then this kind of brings us to the protagonist, and what exactly is a protagonist? We can look at the origins and look at the Greek definition that means the player of the first part, or the chief actor. But I think that in context of modern days, the better example is describing this as the character that is moving the plot forward. They are the one that is pushing the progress of the plot, and they're the only character really to be progressing it. Usually too, the protagonist goes through some sort of change, or evolution even, whether they are trying to change and cannot or trying to change and do. Their arc is most definitely tied to the actual progression of the plot and are usually a reflection of some of the themes. It is the protagonist's wants and needs and goals that really move the story forward. They make decisions and take actions that directly influence and move the plot. Some examples of characters that are the protagonist, but neither the main character nor the hero are Johnny Silverhand in, the f up, Samurai. in Cyberpunk 2047. He is neither a hero nor the main character. He often is portrayed as a rebel that is fighting for a greater cause, but shows very little in regard to those around him. Johnny Silverhand is also not exactly the main character as that role is really taken as the player character V. And then there is the example that really kind of triggered this initial video or triggered this topic. And that is in Mad Max Fury Road. Furiosa is not exactly the hero nor is she the main character, but she is the protagonist. Furiosa is the one that is driving the plot, and she is the main reason, really, that we have the story happening and progressing the way that it does. Despite the title being Mad Max Fury Road, 
Furiosa really is the one that is driving the plot. And then we also have Akira in Akira. Akira drives the plot and is really the one that makes the story happen the way that it does. They are the catalyst for most of the conflict and they are the one that is moving and causing the chain reactions to trigger the events that follow. This is of course mostly in terms of the film, seeing as I am not totally familiar with the manga. And then finally there is Dutch in Red Dead Redemption. Dutch is very much the protagonist, especially in the first few acts of the game. I don't think anybody will say that Dutch is a hero, and he definitely isn't the main character. But he is the one that is moving the plot along, giving missions and having a grander plan for the gang. And then we have the main character. The biggest difference between the main character and the protagonist, though, is the fact that the protagonist is the one that drives the plot, where the plot then impacts the main character. Now, this is why we often see the combination of the protagonist and the main character used so much. And it's not wrong to say that most of the time, these are the same thing. But they can be separate. And it's actually quite interesting when these two things are separated. The main character is who the story is really about. They're usually given the most screen time or most time on the page. Usually, too, the audience has the strongest connection to the main character. This is why in so many video games, the main character is not always the protagonist. The main character is usually the avatar that the player is playing as. Some examples, though, are in Fury Road Mad Max, where Max is the main character, though he is not really the protagonist, nor is he much of a hero. The plot sort of happens to him and kicks off the journey that he is then on. Quite literally, he is strapped to a car and driven down the plot. I rewatched this movie recently and got me thinking about the role of the main characters and the protagonist and even heroes. It's a different discussion entirely to talk about what makes a hero a hero, but Furiosa and Max play two very different roles in terms of the story's progression. Furiosa, in every sense of the word, is driving the plot. She is the one who decides to leave with the other women to find the green place. Furiosa and her wants are the path the plot is following. Max, on the other hand, reluctantly decides to help and later goes through an arc of his home where he chooses to stay and be helpful or at least be a protective role where Furiosa's own arc is in trusting him. But there's also in Akira, there is Kanada, who is the main character but not exactly the protagonist. In some ways, yes, he is, but in the terms of drawing a hard role for him, he is by and large the main character, where the plot sort of happens to him. Again, this is of course just mostly looking at the film rather than the manga, because I know in the manga he plays a much more active role in the plot. But we can look at Arthur Morgan in Red Dead Redemption 2. He's not really a hero. The, the player can steer and drive him to more heroic things, but he is most definitely not the protagonist for the earlier acts of the game. Arthur Morgan is not in control really of the plot and often is sent on missions by Dutch and for Dutch or for some of the other characters in the camp. And then finally, we also have Geralt in The Witcher. At times, Geralt might be the protagonist, but in reality, they are mostly just the main character, servicing and even assisting the characters that are mostly driving the plot. Ciri is one of those, but also in the books, there are many of other cases where Geralt isn't exactly in control of the plot despite being the main character and the one who the story is mostly about. But why does this really matter? 
besides the hyper analysis of different stories and the role a character might play. In part, it's for that. It's for understanding stories on a deeper level and maybe even disagreeing with some of the analysis that is done on those stories. And in the end, sometimes these terms are just nebulous labels that don't really make or break a story. But I will say that it can be fun and even interesting to try and analyze stories on a deeper level using these terms. Sometimes we can use it in a way to examine and analyze and understand better what exactly makes a hero or what exactly makes a character resonate with the audience. And we might also use it to explore why one character might be seen or viewed as a main character, but why they are not seen or viewed as a protagonist. And I should say too that we don't have to live and die by these terms. Just because I might ascribe this term to one character or another does not mean that it is a hard line in the stand. Unless, of course, the author or the creator of the story said so, it still is up to the interpretation of the audience and how they might resonate or interpret a character's role in the story. It would be ridiculous to say that every character needs to fit into one of these categories or one of these roles. Stories are so much more flexible and dynamic than just having these perfect buckets where we can place a character into. But understanding these terms and using them can often help us in creating more compelling characters and creating characters that might resonate more with your audience. It'll sometimes help us understand other stories as well and improve our own writing. There may be an instance where you might want to write a main character, but you don't want them to be the hero. And knowing that, you can then prepare and either create a new character that can be that hero or forego a heroic character altogether. Or we might want to make a hero who is not the protagonist. And understanding these terms, or at least being aware of them, can open the door to being a more effective storyteller and sometimes a better writer. Thanks for watching. Let me know if this is something that you've ever considered or if these are terms and tools that you use for your own writing. I have to give a special shout out to the new channel members, which is something I totally did not expect to happen. Tier one member, Kimmel Zarellisi, and tier two channel member C Thompson 29. Thank you everybody for all your support and let me know what you're wrestling with. I'm always curious to hear what some of the projects are that you're working on, as well as some of the questions you might have. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.